Nathan? Yeah. How are you? Mike? I'm doing good. All right, can I get you anything? Water or coffee? No, I'm good. Right. Tell me what's wrong. So, uh, we have a, a unit on this side if you want to okay. head over there. This is Shia, by the way. Hi, Shia. <laughs> Cute. And, uh, basically, when it, right, right now it's right now it's mild, you know, the weather. So, house gets cool. It's not usually a problem. But, uh, just the one unit for the house. One thing, I'm not sure. Two and a half ton for the whole house. Mm -hmm. you know, it's Small house. Floor, second floor? First floor, second floor. I'm not, you know small house but i'm not sure if that's enough okay but then when it gets like you know 80s 90s out it's running 24 7 you know so i know that's a problem on the system you know, it's very stressful for the system and it's also on my electric bill it's like yeah july was like 16 dollars wow uh, coil looks looks clean okay discharging heat Airflow. Take a look at the pressures in the system. Sure. And check the capacitor. Make sure that's where it should be now. Recent service. Recent repairs. Anything? Um, so I had a technician come down and they said that there's nothing that they could do. There's no refrigerant, but they didn't check any of the voltages. Like okay. That, you know, so I, I've seen you do that. Yep. Um, the filters. You know, I put a new filter in every 30 days. Okay. Uh, number eight. Um, All right. Yeah. And uh, that's basically it. So. Okay. If there's anything to do, then we can do it. And if it's nothing to do, then the uh, air handler is it in the crawl space or is it in the attic? In the attic. So they ran the line set up inside the wall and to the attic. Yeah. Is it in the knee wall of the attic? It's got like a, yeah, yeah, it's like a side attic. Yeah. Is it accessible? Uh, in a couple minutes, we'll just get dressed. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll start out here. See what's yeah. going on. Right. Cool. Perfect. Perfect. First thing we're gonna do: underload capacitor test. I have one lead on common, another lead right now on fan. Right. And I have 300, let's say 300 volts. We're going to type that into our calculator. 300, oh, that's 302, 303, let's do 302. Let's test the amperage. All right. So let's set this to amps. Let's grab... Oh, shit. <laughs> I ain't touching that. Touch that, you get a little feel it. All right, and here is our fan wire. And I'm running at 0.5. Type that into our app, 0.5. I don't know what it is, but I think it's gonna be five. Let's calculate. And it's reading 4.39. I think it's a five. We'll remember that for a second, All right? And next we're gonna test the compressor side. guessed at 35 it's reading 42 almost let's pull out that cap and see what it is actually I can see it right there we say 45 so let's type that in come on capacitor 40 calculate it's acceptable it's reading 42 but the fan no bueno all right, I have the disconnect pulled. And hear that contactor? Eventually, that's going to give away. So let's pull out this capacitor and take a look at this. With it not running, we're testing the capacitor by itself. We're getting 5.3, but dynamically, testing it while the system is running doesn't give me that. This capacitor. 
what you can hear, the liquid inside. This capacitor is almost dead. My contactor still making a lot of crazy racket. We should also get, make that go away, and then we're gonna clean the coil. It's easy. Take the top off, clean this bad boy. She looks fairly clean, but looks gonna be deceiving. All right, the grand reveal. For a contactor replacement, I'm using the Core Sense by Emerson. Designed, right, for Copeland compressors. We got a Copeland compressor down there, as you can see. Yep, see it? There's the Copeland compressor. So here is my new contactor. Cleaned up the wiring. All right, we're gonna blow out the remainder of the, the cocky and debris in the electrical compartment, the bottom electrical compartment. Here's all my leads for my dual capacitor. Putting in the Titan HD, made in America. Moving forward, we're doing AMRAD. All right, that's gonna slide right in there. All right, and I'm gonna keep the label up so the next guy can see without having to take it out what the size of the capacitor is all right my dual capacitor is wired purple is compressor brown is fan and the orange and the red going common and if you're unsure look at the wires all right she's on okay got a nice little error code there Right, flashes. We have one flash to six flashes. It tells you if something's wrong. It's very, very nice. Very, very nice. The Copeland corsets. All right, now I'm dynamically testing. She's not bouncing around like she was before. All right, dynamically testing before and after. She's not bouncing around. We're at 348 point, let's say four. All right, we're gonna plug in that number into my HVAC Tech School app. All right, let's see what we'll read. All right, so as you just saw in that screenshot, I'm at 40.4 microfarads for a compressor. Now we're gonna test fan. All right, she's not bouncing around that much either. Looks like 316. Plug in that number. Okay, I cleaned out the inside of the base of the condenser. We rinsed off the coil. And as you can see, I did not remove the covers. All this dirt and mud here, you know, it'd be a pain to get back on, but my coil is now clean. We rinse from inside out. There's a tight capacitor, there's a compressor, and we had enough play on the wiring where I could just just carefully balance the fan and blade and top assembly. That's all good there, all secure, nice and neat. Very, very nice. Okay, now we're missing a service port here. All right, we're gonna put some brass caps on there. We got one on the low side, all right? The refrigeration port caps, they are your first line of defense against core leaks. So make sure you put them back on. Don't lose them if they're missing one. This one obviously hasn't been in place for a while. I could tell how, how oxidized the pipe is. See how that's nice and brass? This has been off for a while. We're gonna put some brass caps on. Might as well do both. Nice new O-rings. In some jurisdic jurisdictions, you, you shall install locking caps, right? We don't need that in my jurisdiction. I used to put them in years ago and I brought up the International Mechanical Code, and yeah, that didn't work out too well for me. <laughs> and they're expensive. Let's put the cover back on, power back on. All right, got my Testo 557 hooked up. A suction side temperature probe on the three quarter. The high side liquid line on the three eighths. Take a look at our numbers. Now it's been running for about, say, three minutes or so. And right now we would be undercharged. We're gonna let this sit for several minutes. Maybe wait till 8.30ish, maybe 8.32. A few more minutes and see what our reading's at. Because right now, low side of 85, high side of 216. Yes, the coil is cold and wet in the cold water, but it's clean. I want that to dry off. And we have a 
subcooling of 25, superheat of 48. So, and I'm un unsure of what kind of metering device we have inside, but right now she's undercharged. And we can back that up with our temperature and pressure charging chart, pink pure on, right? Design subcooling and service valve in eight degrees. But let's take a look at our outdoor ambient temperature, which right now is, can't read that, but it is 73. Let's go to in between 70 and 75. My vapor pressure at the large service port, right? Vapor is 85, and as you can see, the lowest we go is 90. Let's go in the middle. In the middle, I should be right now between 264 and 276 on my liquid pressure. And we're at 218, 219. So unless this comes up a considerable amount, we are undercharged. Yep. 35 past the hour. We're still undercharged, ladies and gentlemen. Slowly going up, but it's been running for, I'd say, about a good nine minutes. We are slowly increasing on the high side. We'll give it another five minutes. All right, take a look at our pressures. Almost uh, a little over 98 on the low, 285 on the high, 3.1 degrees of subcooling, superheat, 40. Um, <laughs> what do you think? I wasn't going to promote the stickers. <laughs> If you want any stickers, email me, mike at mikeypipes.com. Um, all right, we have an outdoor temperature of around 73 degrees. We're almost at 100. Let's go to 75, 73. So 70 to 282, right? But our sub cooling is at three and our superheat is at 40. And it's really, and it's been struggling at that to get to there. It's been running for 20 minutes. and. Total system charge, factory charge was 4.6 pounds. Uh, you know, it's tough. You know, I, I sensed, I sensed, especially with a service port missing, that we might be slightly undercharged, especially with that 30 degree coil. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add half a pound of R410. I'm gonna zero out the scale. I'm gonna purge out the air out of my low side. Purge out the air out of my high side. Okay. And purge out the air in my charging place. Okay, we're gonna open up the charging port on my four port Testo 557. We're gonna crack this open a little bit. We're charging with a vapor, throw the liquid upside down. We'll stop right there at 0.5 pounds. There we go. We're gonna let that run for about another five minutes to see how it is, but I'm quite confident. You'll see our super heat has went down and our subcooling is starting to go up. That's what's gonna happen if you're undercharged, right? Stickers, email me, mike at mikeypipes.com. If you ain't testing your guest, this is the Bosch IDS 2.0 Bosch sponsored sticker. Here's the original version 1.0. If you ain't testing your guessing, I also got the season's greetings and I have the stacks, hacks bring me stacks. And these are the stick magnets that I give out. Good for the refrigerator, good for a boiler, good on the water, you stick it right on there. Uh, it's good for $50 off future service call. It's good, it's good for branding. And it uh, just reminds people, you know, especially when they walk past the refrigerator, this is who they called. All right. I think we are pretty much golden. I may add a little bit more, bringing up that uh, subcooling up and bring that super heat down. But so far, so good. 37 degree evaporator, almost a 97 and a half degree condensing coil. So we are slightly, slightly, slightly undercharged on this two and a half ton system in this cape over here in Cedarhurst, New York, which is located in the five towns in Nassau County. We're in Valley Stream. If we're in your service area, give us a call, 516-348-6300. And if you're in the Lexington, Columbia, part of South Carolina, K Plumbing Service and Mikey Pipes, we're joining our forces together to offer true home services. One call does it all. Check us out, stay tuned. It's happening in just weeks. We're weeks away, ladies and gentlemen. I got some interviews with some technicians tomorrow evening in Columbia, so stay tuned. It's gonna be epic, guys. It's gonna be epic. And I owe it all to every single one of you. All half a million views per month, 
and 45,000 subscribers on this channel. Thank you so much. If you want something a little bit more raw and uncut on, and uncensored, check out Mikey Pipes Uncensored. Link right there. All right, final checkout on this service call. Sorry there, Infinity. Sorry there. You lost them as a customer. When you weren't testing, you weren't testing. You were guessing, guys. Don't be testing. All right. Don't be. Don't be guessing. Be testing. Now. I'm there now instead. Five one six three four eight six three zero zero. Sorry, Infinity. All right, we're finishing up this service call, and there's one thing I love, one thing I love, and that's getting gifts. You know, I get a lot of gifts from YouTube subscribers, the viewers in the mail, but it's something else when a client gives love. And it's, sometimes it's the meaning of deep, deep, but other times it's gifts like this. Look at this. This is the, Reb, the Rebbe's Choice. This is their garlic cayenne, cayenne hot it's hard, sauce. It's hard to read it. In the, I know, it's hard to read up yeah, <laughs> reverse. Like a mirror. <laughs> but this is Nathan, and he is right. the founder of, what, of the, the founder? Rebbe's Choice. Yeah, no, the I'm the choice. founder, yeah, yeah. They got amazing herring, by the way, and it's acquired taste. It really is. You really have to have that palate for it. It's yeah, like having chillant for the first time. Oh, man. Chillant, let's, <laughs> let's not get too far into this. Then you're going to be back for a plumbing call. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully on a, maybe on leftovers on a Sunday morning. Yeah, nah, yeah, but like, if, you put, if you put up a pot Thursday night, maybe. Okay, listen, come by Thursday night. We'll have a beer, you know, we can hang All out. right, yeah, very yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Not this Thursday. I'm going to be in South Carolina. Oh, yeah. But okay. I'm coming back uh, right. Monday. Well, um, good luck with that. Thank you. Thank Blessings. You. You want to give a shout out to your company? Uh, Rebbe's Choice. This is the right type of heat for your house in the, in the summer. There you go. Excellent. Check them out. They're available online and in all kosher supermarkets. And I think Costco, Stop and Shop. Not yet. Not Costco? Not yet. You got to get Costco. Costco. ShopRite, though. We're in all the ShopRites in the East Coast. And Rebbe'sChoice.com. R-E-B-B-E-S-C-H-O-I-C-E.com. Check it out. Perfect. Thanks for watching, guys. Be well. God bless. Stay safe.